that most people are neglectful with. Worshipping Allah and targeting that which most people don't have the time, don't have the concern, don't have the insight to target and focus on. Ibn Rushd said, based on this, the best time to worship Allah, the best time is to show yourself to Allah, to prove yourself to Allah, is what nobody else is doing. Is what nobody else is doing. If you want to prove your love to Allah, develop some ibadah, develop some worship, develop some habits that nobody else is doing. Why? Because it's very easy to fast when everybody is fasting. When Ramadan approaches in a few weeks and the spirit of fasting is here, it's very easy to fast. It's very easy to stand up in night prayers when everybody else is standing up. But how hard is it? As Allah Azza wa describes, to peel your body off of the bed and to stand up for night prayer in the depth of the night alone. It's very easy to worship Allah. It's very easy to do what's right when everybody else is doing it. But when nobody else is doing it, when it's a neglectful time or action, it becomes suddenly very hard. And this is why the sunnah is filled with examples of us being motivated, encouraged, reminded of the virtues of these actions that most people forget about. In one narration, the Prophet Muhammad said, Istainu bil ghadwati wa rawha. Take advantage of, seek your help in the early morning between Fajr and Duha and the late afternoon right before Maghrib. Take advantage of that time. How many of us sitting here now have the time? These are times where people are sleeping, people are working, people are cut out. So if you can distract, detach yourself from that and worship Allah, this is a blessed time. In one narration, the Prophet Muhammad said, Man dakhna suq, faqa la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. لَهُ الْمُلْكُ لَهُ الْحَمْدُ يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتُ وَهُوَ الْحَيُّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتُ بِيَدِهِ الْخَيْرُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Whoever enters the souq, the marketplace, their place of business, their trade, and says there is no deity worthy of being worshipped by Allah, to him belongs all sovereignty, to him belongs all praise. He gives life and he takes life. He is the ever-living, the one that never dies, he possesses all good, and he is capable of doing all things. Whoever says this, كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَهُ أَلْفَ أَلْفِ حَسَنًا وَمَحَ عَنْهُ أَلْفَ أَلْفِ سَيِّئًا وَبَنَى لَهُ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنِّ Whoever says this one dua, Allah Azza wa Jalla will record for him one million good deeds and erase from his record one million bad deeds and build a house for him in Jannah. Why? What was the big deal? What did it take to achieve that huge reward? But how many of us, how many people, when about to enter a marketplace, the souq, the place where the shaitan plants his flag, how many of us are thinking about Allah at that time? How many of us are remembering Allah at that time? How many of us would stop to say, wait, let me make the kill? before walking into the store, into the mall, into my business, into my shop. Let me remember Allah. This is only someone of true taqwa, of true iman, so they attain this huge reward. And this is why the Sahaba, when they used to go to Hudayfa ibn Yaman and ask him, Ya Hudayfa, is my name, was my name on the list of those munafiqeen, of those hypocrites? Was my name on there? Hudayfa used to answer by saying what? أَتُصَلِّ إِذَا خَلَوْتَ أَتَسْتَغْفِرْ إِذَا أَنَّبْتَ Do you pray when you're alone? Do you ever pray when you're alone? Do you ever make istighfar after you commit the sin? If the answer is yes, you say, yeah, you've got nothing to worry about. If you're upon the good at times where people are not, if you're doing the things not only in public, not only in the masajid, not only at the time of Ramadan, but if you're upon the khair all the time, in the marketplace, in the early morning, in the evening, while alone, you've got nothing to worry about. And the Prophet Muhammad has trained himself to reach this level. He believed what nobody else was willing to believe. He refrained and said no one all of society was doing was saying yes. He worshipped Allah 
even if it meant, literally, he had to crawl into a cave to worship Allah. For months at a time, he was willing to do so. This is the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the Sahaba that came after Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr was Abu Bakr and was given the title as Siddiq because of those very same reasons. As the Prophet Muhammad said about them, he believed in me when nobody else did. He supported me with his life and his wealth when nobody else would. So for that reason, he's a Siddiq. He is the truthful one. And nobody else was given that title. So dear brothers and sisters, these are the actions that are loved by Allah Azza wa These are the actions that are special. And we notice in the famous hadith of the Prophet Muhammad the agreed upon hadith, when the Prophet Muhammad is describing the horrors of the Day of Judgment and the sun bring, being brought over the heads of the people, and people will be sweaty according to their deeds, according to their sin. He said, some people, some special people, Seven types of people will be shaded. On the day there will be no shade but that shade. We all know the hadith. But why? What was their unique quality that led to them in different places at different times all having that same virtue of feeling none of that pain and none of that misery and being shaded, not in any shade, in the shade of Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? Look at their common denominator. Look at their characteristic. Imam al a just leader. When all of the leaders are corrupt, when the leader has everything in his power and possession to be unjust, this leader chose to be just. A young person, you, not a child, not a senior, but shab, who grew up worshiping Allah. Again, when the norm for all of the shabab, the temptations, the forces, the friends, the environment, when everything was pulling them away. No, but this shab, this youth, chose to worship Allah, chose to keep themselves within the limits of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the list goes on. وَرَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ بِالْمَسَاجِدِ Someone whose heart is attached to the masjid. When the hearts of everyone and everything else are attached to other than that. To everything other than the house of Allah. Someone رَجُلَانِ تَحَابَّا فِي اللَّهِ Pay attention. Notice. What are, what are these qualities that combine them? Two people who love each other for the sake of Allah. They meet only for the sake of Allah. And they part only for the sake of Allah. وَرَجُلٌ and someone who was lured, someone who was tempted, not by anybody, but of someone of status and beauty. Tempted by the opposite gender. A situation that almost everyone would cave, would give in. And their response was what? Inni Allah. No, no, I fear Allah. The norm was to, go, to, to do the opposite. The norm was to respond. Everyone's doing it. And someone, as the Prophet Muhammad said, tasaddaqa bi sadaqa, they give charity to the point that their right hand doesn't even know how much their left hand is given. And someone who remembers Allah while alone, and it causes their eye to shed tears. What was their quality? What was the characteristic? Why did they attain that virtue? Because they were able to oppose the norms. They were able to do the actions that most people would not be able to do or not do the actions that most people are doing, and that led to them having a special virtue. Their brothers and sisters, Sha'ban, the month that we're in right now, is one of those times. It's one of those times the Prophet Muhammad said, يَغْفُلُ عَنْهُ كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ Most people don't pay any attention to. Most people are negligent with. Most people are forgetful about. So increase. Be one of those strangers. Do a little bit more. Increase your dhikr. Increase your idadah. If we haven't read the Qur'an all year, begin reading the Qur'an. As Ibn Rajab said, Sha'ban is the month for the preparation of the Qur'an. To prepare yourself for reading the Qur'an in Ramadan. Otherwise, how many of us have goals? I'm going to do this in Ramadan. I'm going to read the Qur'an ten times. I'm going to add this. I'm going to change my ways. But Ramadan comes and goes. And for many of us, nothing happens. Nothing changes. The Sahaba, the Salaf, the Tabi'een, they would change from now. 
كانوا يتفرغوا لقراءة القرآن. They would free up their time. Some narrations mention أغلق حانوته. In Shaban, they would close their shops. They would prepare. They would get in the zone. أقول بس ما هو استغفر الله لكم استغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سلم سنته واهتدى بهذه اليوم الدين وبعد. If everyone could try to move to your left, to slightly move over to the left to make way for the one for the ones walking in. The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, when being asked by Usama this question, why? What is it about Shaban? Why do we see you going more, doing more, increasing your ibadah, fasting almost the entire month? He gave two answers. The first one, it's a month that people are neglectful with. And secondly, he said, the second answer, وَإِنَّهُ شَهْوًا يُرْفَعُ فِيهِ الْأَعْمَالُ إِلَى اللَّهِ It's a month that the deeds are lifted up to Allah Azza wa Jal, are presented to Allah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine your record? Your deeds being lifted and presented to Allah now, any day now, only Allah knows when. And the scholars, they say there's three different times that our deeds are lifted to Allah. There's a daily presentation. As the Prophet Muhammad said, the angels, they descend upon you. Angels of the night and angels of the day. And they meet, يَجْتَمِعُونَ فِي صَلَاةِ الْفَجْرِ وَالْعَصْرِ they meet after Fajr and Asr prayer. And then one group of them ascend to Allah. And Allah Azza wa asks them, when He's already knowing, He asks them, كَيْفَ تَرَكْتُمْ عِبَادِي How did you leave my servants? And they say, Oh Allah, we came to them while they were worshipping you, and we left them while they were worshipping you. A general daily accountability. And they say there's a weekly accountability, a weekly presentation to Allah. As the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, your deeds will be presented to Allah on every Monday and Thursday of the week. Everything you did all week is presented to Allah, a final presentation. And everyone is forgiven on those days except for someone who had animosity, a problem between them and their brother. They had issues they didn't solve. They had a quarreling that got between them. So it will be said to those, about those two individuals, Keep their record on hold. Don't present their deeds to me until they reconcile between them. And we also have our annual presentation. Our presentation that happens now. The deeds that we've done all year being lifted and presented to Allah Azza wa Jal. Ask yourself, what will that report look like? What will that scroll contain? Hold yourself accountable, as Omar used to say, before you are held accountable. Weigh your own deeds before you are weighed. What have we done all year? What will our scroll contain? What will our book contain? What will those angels present to Allah in this month of Sha'ban? The Prophet Muhammad he wanted to make sure that he was in the best of situations when those deeds were presented, let alone concerned about what was presented. Let alone could be concerned about what was in those deeds, what those scrolls contained. So strive, dear brothers and sisters, to be in the best condition, to do a little bit more, to begin carrying and picking up those habits of ibadah before Ramadan approaches, which is right around the corner. And lastly, beware. Be aware of falling into mistakes and innovation during these times. Sha'ban, unfortunately, is one of the times where there's a lot of misunderstanding, to say the least. A lot of misconception, to say the least. Regarding especially the 15th night of Sha'ban, which I believe is Saturday night. We'll hear about a lot of events. We'll hear about a lot of virtues. But as the scholars of hadith past and present have said, there is not a single Narration, not one. To establish any virtue and fasting and singling out the 15th night of Sha'ban and praying a special qiyam on that night and having
some special dua made on that night, and special sustenance being sent on that night, or anything else that's widespread amongst the people. There's not a single narration to the point. Ibn al-Arabi, in his book, Aradhu al he said, there's not a hadith about the 15th of Sha'ban that even deserves to be listened to. Al Qurtubi said, Do not pay any attention to all of this. Don't even look there. So we're going to hear about a lot of practices that go on that have become widespread. But during this blessed month, the last thing that we want with our deeds being presented to Allah. The last thing that we want when everybody else is neglectful to fall into innovation. Why? Because everybody was doing it. To fall into those same norms that Allah Azza wa Jalla dislikes. Allahumma innaka afuun kareemun ta'ibul afu fa'afu'ayna. Allahumma ibn al-Muslimina ayatini muraddan jameela. Allahumma balaghna Ramadan. Allahumma balaghna Ramadan. Allahumma balaghna Ramadan. Allahumma ati nufusna taqwaha. Wa zakkina anta khayru min zakana. Anta wadiyuha wa maulaha. Allahumma inna na'udh bika min ayin la yinfa'a. Wa min nafsi la tashba'a. Wa min qalbin la yakhsha'a. Wa min da'batin la yustajabu laha. Allahumma amilna ala dhikrika. Wa shukrika. Wa husna ibadatika. Allahumma ila wasal min qatayna wa sinna ilayk. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله